Back to Alsler, whips it across court, and not a good pass for Autumn Jones, and it's a Buffalo turnover there, sixth of the quarter. Very uncharacteristic for the Bulls. And it's the right look, and it's the right pass overhead, skip across, but it's just a little off, a little low on the pass, and a little too hard. Hard drive to the basket by Cecil. And, and they're the, going to call the offensive foul. And there's the charge that we were just talking about, Paul. Cecil's been a solid player for Bowling Green, but the scout on her is to step up and take a charge because she likes to handle the ball. And that time, Ausler slides her feet over, not quite planted, but still absorbs the upper body positioning charge. Lisa ups for Mariah Suchan. Dump it down low for Ausler. Ausler. Put it up and it was partially blocked by Angela Perry. And this is Kennedy Williams, freshman guard, who's checked in for Bowling Green. Trading off with Rachel Myers, new backcourt in for the Falcons. Long on the three it was Madison Parker. So Jennifer Roos going pretty deep into the bench here, looking for something to spark her team. And that maybe that's it, another nice block. This is Kennedy Williams trying to drive on ups. Trades off with Angela Perry. Get it down low. Layup is up and good. Nicely done by Andrea Cecil. Defensively, that's a tough assignment for Lisa Ups. That's back to basket against a player in Cecil who's a little bit bigger than her and probably has played in the post posi position quite a bit more. Reed Jones. No good on the three. Alzer skies for the rebound, puts it back up and draws the foul. I mentioned that Autumn Jones is instant offense. Coming off an 11-point performance. Last two games, 14 and 11 points off the bench. Well, and this Angela Perry, you see 55 there for Bowling Green, who's a freshman and has kind of been thrown into hot water this year, having to play a lot of minutes, but hey, you know Buffalo is the number one rebounding team in the conference. And so when that shot goes up, your priority cannot be to watch the ball, but you've got to clear out, and especially a long inside player like Cassie Ausler. Got to get a body on her and drive her out. In the first meeting between these two teams, just on February 21st, Cassie Ausler kind of took uh, Angela Perry to school. 20 points and 12 rebounds for the freshman. Buffalo out-rebounded Bowling Green by 17. And it was 49 to 32, and Jennifer Ruse is first one to tell you, Paul, you, you cannot do that in the Mid-American Conference and expect to win basketball games. 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Cecil drives the lane, creates contact, and draws a foul. It's going to be on either Ausler uh, or Ups. Let's see who they call it on. And at this point, the Falcons have just got to try to create something offensively. Well, you saw Cecil keep her eyes up that time. It was great. She switched directions just enough to avoid Ausler. And Lisa Ups tried to take a charge, just not quite there. And definitely a hard hit. But again, Bowling Green, who wants to hit shots, they want to hit 10 threes this game. That's their goal right now. They're finding lanes inside. Sophomore from Oak Harbor, Ohio is Andrea Cecil. She had 10 points in the game on the 21st of February against these two teams, and she's got four right now, four of the seven Bowling Green points. Final seconds here of quarter number one. It's not been a work of art. Bulls trying to get one more basket to maintain the lead going to quarter number two. Fox at 13, get it to Ausler. Ausler up and under move. Nice little flip. Suchan rolls it off the rim. Five seconds to go. Let's see what Santoro can do with it. Flips it. Cecil didn't get the shot off. So both teams struggling to find the basket. Only six out of 29 shots go down. The Bulls had a few more. They lead 11-7 into the first quarter. Start of the second quarter here at Buffalo's Alumni Arena, grooming the next generation of Buffalo cheerleaders, apparently, and the current generation of Buffalo women's basketball players starting to get some national attention. And deserving of that, and it's the 
number 15 RPI. That's the highest ranking for a mid-major program. Saw a bracket last week where they had predicted Buffalo women as a nine seed in the NCAA tournament. That's not just a fluke or a bubble team. That is, you know what, you deserve to be here. And, and if that comes into fruition, that would be big time for this area. Yeah, regardless of what happens in the Mid-American Conference Tournament, there's a pretty good chance that Buffalo is going to be an at-large team in the tournament anyway. And that one rolled in by the freshman center, Angela Perry. So a first quarter that saw these two teams combine for 12 turnovers and just six of 29 shooting. Got to get better here in the second quarter, at least right off the bat for BG it is. Dillard whips it back to Reed, top of the key, Jones, got it! And there's your spark plug. That's been a role that Autumn Jones has really seemed to have embraced as of late. Comes off the bench and whether it's defense or hitting a big tray, she finds a way to really spark her girls up. Instant offense off the bench. A 36% three-point shooter is Autumn Jones. Miss on the BGN. And here come the Bulls. Jones again from the corner. Got it. Boom. Not one. How about two? Last week in their, uh, when they played on the road, she had 11 first quarter points. How about three of those were three, three of the field goals were threes. She's averaging 11 points per game off the bench in her last four games is Autumn Jones. So Buffalo now with two threes in a row. A little 6-0 run here to build a 17-9 lead. Perry for Cecil. Had it blocked by Ausler. Cassie Ausler, that's 21 games in a row with a blocked shot. Kick it out for Dillard. Three, good. And, yeah, Jennifer Roos has got to call a timeout because, oh, my gosh, bang, bang, bang. It's raining threes, and they're all transition looks. And that's what Buffalo, that's how they want to play. So it starts on the defensive end with the Ausler block. It results in another three, three in a row for the Bulls. We're back to Alumni Arena right after this. Lead of the game for the Bulls at 11 points thanks to three straight three-pointers. And you look at the pass, the pass is perfect and Autumn Jones had a couple of them and then of course there's your transition spot up as well. So again, perfect pass, perfect placement. These are transition looks and all probably in a matter of about a 60 second time frame if that. So now the Bulls are up by 11 and providing full court pressure. That's really forcing another turnover. Dillard for Jones, and she tried one too many passes, and it was knocked away. Yeah, and Autumn Jones should have just probably went up with that one. But again, not surprised with the intensity out of that timeout that Buffalo's played with. Foot on the pedal, that's kind of been their motto. Uh, the entire time Felicia would get Jack's been here, you could say, but... Yeah, Autumn Jones should have went up with that. A little too much passing, but you have to credit Bowling Green's defense for hustling back. And this time, Rachel Myers, or correction, Sydney Lambert gets it across half court. Trades it off to her teammate, Carly Santoro, and BG sets up their offense. You can see they have struggled to shoot in this game. Let's see what Cecil can do. Rims out the three, no good. Rebounded by Ups. Cat Ups to Autumn Jones and a travel. Autumn Jones is saying, I had the pivot foot down. Yeah, uh, Autumn Jones tends to tends to operate at such a quick pace, it sometimes looks like a travel. She is. It, well, I use the word spazzy and not in a bad way, almost a compliment that no one else can keep up with her. But that's unfortunate because it was a great rebound from Cat Ups and a great push up. And it would gonna probably be a nice finish for Ausler. Lambert guarded by Reed. Trying to find an opening. Pushed back again by Reed, who has to trade it off to Haley Puck. Shot clock winding down. Three is drained from the corner by Sydney Lambert, her first three of the, of the game. First points of the game. And Ausler is fouled by Perry on the outlet, inlet pass. Two yeah. on the freshman center, Perry. And, and you see Ausler at that point, you've either got a three-quarter and get your foot whipped around and, and really get your hand in the passing lane, or you got to sit your butt down and kind of get ready to play. But 
Um, it, you get ducked in that low against a player like Cassie Ausler, it, it's usually not in the defense's favor. And if you don't do that, you will sit your butt down. Cassie Ausler with a turnaround jumper is good. We're talking about how deadly Cassie Ausler is close to the hoop, and she steps out and hits a shot, and that's something that she's been automatic with this year. Starting to get so much attention because of how many ways she can score. Wonderful release on the ball. It's the next level of her game that has made her an all-conference level player. Long three, no good by Lambert. Whistle on the rebound. It's going back the other way. Cassie Hauser story back-to-back -back Mac East Players of the Week. And watch the replay on this one. Uh, you think these guys do rebounding in practice? Look at Stephanie Reed, way undersized, just gets down and drives back. That is a tough rebound for Stephanie Reed, but tough in a way that you kind of brush your shoulder off. Good ball movement. Reed has the three rim out off the feed from Dillard. Cecil sees an opening, drives down and hits. And there's your rim to rim. Cecil, you look at her size, you don't think she wants to carry the ball, but. She's no problem going rim to rim, and if you don't step up. Nice get steal. Ball knocked away from Alzer into the hands of Gloniak. It's the eighth turnover forced by Bowling Green. They are just not shooting the ball well, which is not allowing them to get much closer than they are right now. Just five of 20 shooting for the Falcons. Yeah, the official going to call Cat ups with that block. I thought she did a pretty nice job of jumping out and trying to stay square to the player, but it is a lot of contact. You have to credit Bowling Green. The reason they're staying in this one is, well, they're giving themselves some second chance opportunities. And with the exception of a, a couple quick buckets for Buffalo, the Bulls haven't been shooting great either. And so it's still only an eight-point game. Yeah, it's that 9-0 run, which was the three consecutive three-pointers that is really been the, the only moment of this game where one team has been dominant over the other. There's the miss by Gloniak, rebounded by Dillard. Dillard bounce pass, great feed, Hemp Hill lost the rim, but the follow up and in for Ausler. And how many times have you seen that this year, Paul? Run on the floor for Cassie Ausler. It's an arduous task, but she gets there. And the rebound loose on the floor. Jump ball will go to Buffalo. Good hustle by Cassie Ups. Here's the basket. Watch the follow. Watch both of the bigs run the court. You saw Cassie how close she was to the opposite hoop. And that's a perfect pass and beautiful, but you never give up. As a post, you have to get to the rim, and she's heavily rewarded. It just looks pretty. Aesthetically, it's pleasing when you get rim to rim and you finish like that. Left hand on the left side. She's come so far during her career here as a Bull. Transferred in from Robert Morris, a native of Grand Island, New York, about uh, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes from the campus here at UB. All of her family, her sisters, her dad are here cheering her on. They're always here cheering her on. Ten point, Buffalo lead again. Double team pressure in the corner, forces a kick ball. Sierra Dillard is fired up on defense. Well, that's got to be, this has got to be one of the worst traps that you see in the Mid-American Conference. And it's funny saying that because they're not very tall or long, but they just are so fiery. And I would not want those two around me at the same time. Yeah, two of the top uh, players in the MAC in steals, Reed and Ausler. Look at the double team. Look at Hemphill way outside. And the collision will be called on Stephanie Reed as Sydney Lambert goes down. Get, it's a high hedge from Hempel, but sometimes it leads into a track. When the, so it would have been Sydney Lambert dribbling backwards. Summer Hempel stepped with, stuck with it. Stephanie Reed decided to step up and go for the trap and didn't work out in her favor. It's her second foul, just under, well, no, just over four to play. And we get a travel call before the three goes up from Jane Euchre, who's in the game for the first time. Ten point Buffalo lead. They are trying to finish the season undefeated at 12-0 would be the goal. First time in school history. 
They will have played an entire home season without a loss. Nice drive to the basket, and the layup good for Catherine Upps. A member of a senior group here that will be honored after the game is Catherine Upps. They have combined for 500 games and looking for an 86th win. Nice out, nice pass down low, and an easy layup for Angela Perry. Yeah, that's a nice catch and finish. And there you look at the future. Might be pretty bright here for the Falcons. They've got a lot of young players. Air ball this time thrown up by Autumn Jones. Too far from the left corner, and it will go to the Falcons. A lot of younger players. Nine of the 14 players on the BG roster, Amy, are freshmen or sophomores. This is Madison Parker. She'll drive down and hit. And that's another one of your freshmen. So the last two possessions are from first-year players. Making some nice, I don't want to say simple as an easy, but just doing the right thing and doing it well. Good ball movement results in ups, putting up the three and missing it. Good save nearly by Suchan. Instead, it will go out of bounds. BG playing this game without a key player. We'll tell you about that after the replay. And it's great pass, and Cat Ups just didn't get the legs under it. But again, you look at Suchan, one of those seniors, and yeah, she's going to dive and go for that one. Every last opportunity you have to make some big plays here on your home court. Perry on Suchan, can't get it to fall. Dillard across court for Ups. Ups will drive in, float it, and hit it. BG playing without sophomore guard Katerion Thompson, who is number two in the MAC in three-point percentage. And she's been some good offense off the bench for Jennifer Ruse and the Falcons. She is out of this game with an injury. So that's why we're seeing a little bit more of some freshmen like Madison Parker and Kennedy Williams at the guard spot. And that is Lambert, no good on the three, but Perry with the putback. Oh, and that is nice patience and a catch and finish underneath. And, and good hands, solid player in Perry. And ups is fouled on the way to the basket. Sidney Lambert not quite believing the foul call, but... Well, Cat ups is now we've seen a couple possessions doing a great job of just getting and attacking the hoop and missed the three so she's went back to driving and Felicia Leggett Jack will tell you she's she's the woman on my team that puts her heart a hat on and grab, grabs her lunch pail and, and just kind of does all the dirty work and she started almost her entire career. Hannah Hall number four is checked in the game at point guard replacing Stephanie Reed. Suchan for three got it! That's going to be a two just inside. Nonetheless, it, it definitely it's a sigh of relief any time, especially on senior night, one of your, your veterans makes a nice play like that. And this time, Perry tried to kick it back out off the inlet pass and threw it away. Hannah Hall figures to be the heir apparent to Stephanie Reed at the point guard position for next year. Kind of looks a little like her. Plays a lot like her too, doesn't she? Let's see if she shoots like her. That one's off. And it's Perry with a rebound. But it's stolen back and put in by Jones. We talked a lot about the, the backcourt of Stephanie Reed and Sierra Dillard. Can you imagine? Hannah Hall and Autumn Jones as well. Talk about fire and quickness and intensity. Look at those two right there. That's another one that, I mean, you know, I, I'm about 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 I don't want anything to do with those two in front of me. <laughs> Watch the replay. Look at the quick anticipation by Autumn Jones. And it's those, those little, I call it the energy plays, the energy bunny. Just really get your team going and pumped up. Lambert. Three-pointer is no good by Sierra Thompson. She's just in the game. Another one of those freshmen for the Falcons. Autumn Jones pulls up and is called for the offensive foul. <laughs> Autumn Jones <laughs> taking a second to collect herself. <laughs> frustrated. Looked like she's playing statue for a second, but you know the worst part about that 
for Autumn Jones is she made the shot. <laughs> she is such an emotional player is Autumn Jones and sometimes it gets uh, the best of her and she kind of waved at the official a little bit but then kind of calmed herself and collected herself. Good job there. Well that's a sign of maturity. Final seconds of quarter number two. The Bulls trying to hang on to the 12-point lead. Good save by Suchan to Autumn Jones with 10 seconds to go. Jones for Hall. She bobbled it, collects it, flips it behind her back, misconnects on the pass for Suchan, and it'll have to be Santoro with the long shot that comes up short. But the first half comes to an end. It was a little bit of a rough start, but a big stretch in the second quarter allows the Bulls to hit some big shots and hold a 12-point lead. It's halftime at Buffalo's Alumni Arena with the Bulls leading the Bowling Green Falcons 32-20. UB outscoring BG 21-13 in the second quarter. The Bulls shooting 60% after both of these teams got off to tough starts in quarter number one. And always a big reason when the Bulls hold the lead is the play of point guard Stephanie Reed. Five points and four assists in the first half year for the senior from Australia playing her final game here at UB's Alumni Arena. It's been an amazing journey from a long way away but Stephanie Reed will go down as one of UB's best. Hi I'm Stephanie Reed. I'm a senior at point guard on the UB women's basketball team. I mean it's been a really fun ride. I think that I've grown a lot as a person and a player. I think that that's a lot of credit to the coaches, Coach Jack. I think we've just gotten better every year and I think that's really helped me grow on the court. I feel like the game's just kind of grown natural to me. I feel that now I'm able to read the game more. I think, you know, when I was home, it's practice every couple of days. Now playing the game every day, you get that rhythm, you get that sense of idea of what you're doing and why. And, you know, I think that building that repetition, it's just made me a better player because now I can read the game a lot better. And I think that I've become a lot more athletic since being here. Top of the key, three-pointer by Santucci is no good. Rebounded by Stephanie Reed. Here comes Reed on the run. Reed into the lane, all the way. Good pounding and the foul. Being a point guard, I'd have to naturally be a leader on the court. Um, but, you know, I feel like I've learned now and I've really stepped up to the role of learning all of what Coach Jack has to offer and then being able to help others to understand it. I mean, we've got a lot of balance. Um, there's a lot of people on the court now that can handle the ball, and that's absolutely the most helpful thing for me because it takes so much press off me and it allows me to run. And, I mean, if you've seen practice, you know I love to run. So, um, you know, it's just going to be good to see us pushing the ball. We're pushing it with the pass this year. So, you know, it's going, it's going down the other team's throat. Here come the Bulls. Reed behind the back dribble. Off to ups, ups, layup. Good! Yeah! And that's a record for Stephanie Reed. I think this is a group that's going to demand respect. I think that we're going to demand respect from our opponent. We're going to demand respect from Buffalo. And I mean, we've already got that, but we're going to demand it more. And the MAC, we're going to demand respect from them. And now we're coming in with expectations on our shoulders, so we can only rise to them. And, you know, if we rise to those expectations, there is no limit to where we can go. This year is the year. I think that we've had great teams in the past, great players, but this year with the dynamic, with the chemistry and with the players that we've got on our team, there is no reason that we can't go further than the first round of the NCAA. Halftime continues here at UB's Alumni Arena with the Bulls leading Bowling Green 32-20 as Buffalo looks to finish an undefeated home season. And Amy, just part of a long list of amazing achievements that Bulls fans have seen in Alumni Arena from both the men's and the women's team. Let's start talking about the men's team that wrapped up their regular season last night with a win over Bowling Green. 23-8 overall, 15-3, the 23 wins tied for the most in school history. Yeah, and I mean high expectations going into a Mid-American Conference tournament, but again, you roll into that tournament on the road, a 30-point win.
coming from all different types of players and, and they score in so many different ways and we're talking about how much program history the women have set. Well, guess what? The men, they are matching a lot of those things. It's incredibly balanced scoring. Perkins, Massenburg, Clark and Harris on a deep bench. The Bulls can do it in so many different ways. Cut down the nets as MAC East champions. Number one overall seed. Uh, regular season and number one seed for the MAC tournament. So there's the list of achievements. The conference wins are the most since Kent State did it over 10 years ago. Last night was their fourth 100-point game of the year. Bulls will begin play Thursday at noon in the MAC tournament in Cleveland against either Central Michigan or Bowling Green. Meanwhile, as good as the men have been, the women have been just as good, if not better this year. Yeah, you just wonder what conversations go on in the back hallway if they kind of go back and forth because really, I don't know who wins that one. You look at what the women have done this year, Paul, and we talk about it all the time. You look at the stands and you're seeing a lot of the season ticket holders that used to only show up to the men. Well, guess what? They're coming to check this team out too and, and deserving of that. Again, the balance. It's not one player. The passion coming through the whole team and the head coach there, of course. And it's just been a, a season here at Alumni Arena that I think will uh, will be remembered for a very long time. Yeah, and between the men's and the women's team and all the success and the wins, there are very few programs in the country that can match what has been done here in Buffalo by the men's and women's team. The women are going to try to uh, add a little more to it. 24 total wins. The number two seed in the MAC tournament with a chance to be the number one seed. We'll tell you about that in the second half. Look where they are in the RPI rankings. Stephanie Reed has done almost everything you've asked of her in her career. It's been a pretty amazing year. We've got a half of it left here and a lot of it left in Cleveland where the Bulls will get begin play on Wednesday. We're back with the start of the second half at UB's Alumni Arena. Bulls by 12. More right after this. Welcome back to Alumni Arena, uh, where the Buffalo Bulls have a 12-point halftime lead over the Bowling Green Falcons. You get a look at the first half stats there. Bowling Green, who had the goal, they wanted 10 three-point shots. That's where they really, really struggled in this first half. Only one for 11, but we know this is a, have some veterans leaders on this team as well that are they're going to have the ability to get hot. So look for that for Bowling Green to come out firing and attacking and going on a scoring run here. But for Buffalo, it's been the junior college transfer. Autumn Jones off the bench, the spark plug. Couple threes. She is leading her team eight points and two steals in just 12 minutes of action in that first half. But again, big plays, defense, offense. You see a little bit of everything. See if she can keep things going for her Bulls coming up in the second half. Start of the second half here in Buffalo with the Bulls up 32 to 20, but a score of high interest for Buffalo fans. Toledo leads Central Michigan 43-35 at the half. If Toledo wins and the Bulls win here, Buffalo will be the number one seed and the regular season co-champions of the Mid-American Conference. So there's a lot on the line, not only here, Amy, but there as well in Toledo. Yeah, that's going to be fun because if that comes down to the wire, Paul, that news is going to be coming in live for all of us. We're in Buffalo. They are cutting down the net for a much bigger reason than that. As much as obviously we keep talking about all these great things they've done all year, I mean, to clinch that as well on top, that's, uh, that's beyond special. Yeah, so remember, we want you to stick around after the game because the Bulls will have their senior day festivities, and depending on what happens at that game, uh, we'll have the update for you. It may take on a little different level of celebration here. We start the second half with a turnover by the Falcons, but they take it right back. Sidney Lambert steals it right back. Angela Perry was a big force in the first half. Let's see what she can do here. She'll kick it out, and it's through the hands. It's stolen away by Stephanie Reed. Reed glides in and scores. Defense to offense, and that's the motto around Alumni Arena. But how frustrating for Bowling Green in that it's kind of been the story of their first half. Again, it was great to go inside out. It was just not a, a clean pass and catch. And Haley Puck on the jumper is no good. It goes out of bounds. It will stay with the Falcons. 
Look at the quick hands. Boy, the Bulls have kind of been all over the ball handlers all game. It's the quick hands, like you said, Paul, but then also this this tenacious mentality just to tip it and then continue to pursue it with that intensity. And usually you, you gain possession of the rock. This is Lambert. No good. I'm sorry, Santoro. No good on the three. Sierra Dillard, slow dribble for Ausler. And now back to Reed to set it all up. Bull shot much better in quarter number two, over 60%. And that's Dillard who gets fouled on the drive to the basket. It's exactly 60%, 9 of 15 in the second quarter for Buffalo after a disappointing 4 of 16 in the first quarter. Because Dillard's such a deadly three-point shooter and she will pull that shot. Cecil has to go out there, the closeout has to be a bit more intense and contest a little bit higher. Inbound goes to Hemphill, she bobbled it so she has to kick it back out to Reed. Catherine Upps will flip it for Hemphill, she'll pull up, no, she'll drop it to Ausler who can't put the layup in and it's pulled down by the Falcons in the arms of Andrea Cecil. And Cecil will go all the way and score. Leading scorer for Bowling Green, Andrea Cecil with eight points. Ausler backing in on Perry, hook shot, good. Right, and I mean for Buffalo, they've just got to go to what works. And you see just calm, composed, the right read and a nice finish. Cassie Ausler averaging 15 and a half points and 10 rebounds in the last eight games. Getting close to double figures is the senior from Grand Island, New York. And again, more pressure on the ball handler, making it uneasy for Bowling Green. And again, long miss on the three. But an offensive rebound pulled in by Sidney Lambert. The long shots often mean long rebounds. And so Bowling Green did a nice job pursuing those in this first half and now early on in the second. Santoro driving to the basket, drawing the foul. I think that one may go on Cassie Ausler. No, every time I think it's on Cassie Ausler, it winds up being on someone else. This time, Catherine Ups is third. Well, Cat Ups, <laughs> you saw, you saw what she had to say about that. I thought she did a nice job of getting outside the arc and really planting herself, taking that charge. Carly Santoro is one of the captains for the Bowling Green Falcons, the junior from Bellevue, Ohio. And she makes both free throws. Five in the game for the BG leading scorer who averages just under 13. She had a 30 point game earlier this year to Carly Santoro. Dillard no good with the jump with the jumper and it's Santoro with the rebound. It's her sixth board of the game. And Santoro will drive and have it swatted away by Ausler. Santoro for Perry, nice first step, but too nice. Traveling called on the freshman from Rochester, Illinois, Angela Perry. And Paul, I mean, you look at these two teams, you wouldn't expect it being Perry against Ausler on the three-point line looking to go on a drive, but that's what we're getting in the second half. Yeah, I don't know that's what uh, Jennifer Roos would really like either. Here's Ausler on the low block, turns around, can't hit. Hemphill between two BG players rebounds it and then nearly throws it away and a timeout called on a hustling slide to the floor by Catherine Upps. We'll take a timeout. Bulls are hustling their way to a 12-point lead. Couple minutes into the third quarter here at UB's Alumni Arena. Neither team has been able to do much in the quarter, but Buffalo had that 12 point lead coming in and they maintain that lead at the moment. And the fans here cheering on their Bulls, trying to hope that this season ends without ever having seen their team lose. Amazing. Bulls 11 and 0 at home. Hemphill with a nice pass for Ausler. What a great pass down low. And that's frustrating for Jennifer Ruse because 
there's so much patience and there's nothing that Bowling Green can do at that point. I mean, if, if Perry wasn't able to get her hand on the ball, she had time and everything, but it's just the experience that Buffalo is playing with. Cecil dumps it back out for Lambert. Santoro will drive the baseline and kick it. And the three by Puck is way off, an air ball. Corralled by Catherine Upps, who gets caught in the backcourt and now has to fling it up to Stephanie Reed. Another great pass, Ausler puts it in. Cassie that, Ausler with 12 points. That's the scout. I mean, Ausler worked so hard in the offseason to get herself in this ridiculous shape. And, and yes, on rebounds or quick deflection, she is getting to the rim. Bowling Green has got to pick her up in transition. And a steal off the pass from Perry. Here's Reed. Leads for Ups. Ups turn, shoots, hits. And you see the bench there. They're happy because that's the kind of basketball they like to play. They don't want to slow it down and run through sets. They want to run, run, run. Six points in a row for Buffalo, and they're building their way to an 18-point lead as Bowling Green has gone over two minutes without scoring and another block shot by Ausler. We'll take a timeout. Watch the plays. Watch the passing. Ausler up and in, and then Reed for Ausler. Well, as it always is for the Bulls, it's all about defense. They have held Bowling Green to just 24% shooting. And in the last minute, 33, Buffalo's on a 6-0 run. Guess what? It's all come from defense into offense. You look at those numbers. Those are not MAC ranks. Those are national, national ranks. And that's why when we talk about at-large bids, I mean, the Mid-American Conference is 7 out of 31 right now in terms of the RPI and the strength of the conference. There's another steal taken away by Reed. Lead pass for Jones. Layup is good. And so to find that amount of success in the Mid-American Conference, a tough place to live, uh, a tough place to survive, I should say, uh, it's it's beyond impressive. And Western New York has, has had the opportunity to support this team all year, and they should be so proud. It's an 8-0 Buffalo run that has built a 20-point lead. Meanwhile, the Falcons have gone over three minutes without scoring. And that pass bobbled and nearly stolen away. Long three, rims out, beats the shot clock by Sidney Lambert. Back come the Bulls, and defense has been the story along with a high tempo offense. Dillard drives in and draws contact and a foul. Steph Reed's eyes always up, and Dillard finds the lane, and they're going to give her the call on that one. I thought she did a nice job attacking. Pretty good rotation on the defense as well. So the officials kind of sorting this thing out here, and it's going to go on Madison Parker. No correction, Claire Gloniak, and they're Going to send Sierra Dillard to the line. There you get a look at when the men get started in the MAC quarterfinals. That's going to be on Wednesday, Thursday at noon against either Central Michigan or Bowling Green's men's team, and those two will play on Monday night. So Cleveland is the reason for Bulls fans to make a trip down the 90 to see the women start play Wednesday and the men play on Thursday. Sierra Dillard, four points in the game. But with Sierra, it's always about all the things she does, which is four assists and a couple of steals already. Yeah, Dilla, and it's been tough for Sierra because teams have really done a nice job scouting her and now making some adjustments, but she finds a way to get her teammates involved and then it really opens things up for her too. And completely unselfish player, wants the win at the end of the day. It's a 10-0 run for the Bulls that has built this 22-point lead. Parker has it knocked away off the leg of Lisa Ups. And again, more of the aggressive defense being played by the Bulls. They have forced 15 Bowling Green turnovers. We're headed towards another opponent at 20 turnovers in a game against Buffalo. And we get a whistle on the drive to the basket by Terry Battle. 
And you see, you look at the court, and you see a, a lot of freshmen, Battle being one of them. A and so for Bowling Green, it's tough to hit the road and compete in this atmosphere, but you have to give them the credit again. They've got offensive rebounds. They're looking, they're making the right looks. Just some of the passes and catches haven't been as clean. Rachel Myers, nice bounce pass for Battle. Rims it out. And we're going the other way. Good hustle by the Bulls. Brittany Morris at number 32 in the game. She's always right around the ball, particularly underneath the basket. Again, a great pass. I thought Battle maybe could just square her shoulders up and make the easy and find the backboard in, in an easy way. But again, I think that's just playing through that, understanding that experience and stuff. But pass is great. There's an opportunity to score. And Bowling Green, they just they got to put the ball in the hoop. Yeah, it's been a struggle for the Falcons, shooting just 9 of 39, 1 of 15 shooting threes. When these two teams played a couple weeks ago, Bowling Green just 8 of 25 shooting threes. Brittany Morrison with a fallaway jumper. Regained by the Falcons. On the move, it's Thompson. Misses, here comes Jones, feeds Dillard ahead of the field, layup good. Seven for Sierra Dillard. Bowling Green, they got to have a player back. Um, assume, they've got to have, and knowing you're playing Buffalo and knowing they're running in transition, there's got to be communication between those top two guards, and that one's got to get back right away. Lots of young players out on the court right now for Bowling Green, including number one, Kennedy Williams. This is Battle. In the lane, no good, out of bounds, rebounded to the Bulls. So the streak now is over four and a half minutes for Bowling Green without any points. And that call is, is actually going the other way, and they're going to reward the Falcons with the ball and call the tip. And Nice job from Jennifer Ruse has kind of got off the bench and said, hold on a second, there was a tip. She didn't just chuck that ball out of bounds, but now Felicia Leggett Jack saying, hold on a second, there wasn't a tip. And this is college basketball. This yes, it is. Let's coaches. see. You decide for yourself now. You get to play official. I don't know, I didn't see a tip. I never want to play official. Uh, I <laughs> never, never. I don't blame they you. They have an incredibly difficult job. Battle down low, can't beat the shot clock. It's a violation and a turnover for the Falcons. And now we're over five minutes. So frustrating for Jennifer Roos and her team to, you can't go five minutes in any game without scoring, particularly against uh, a team as good as Buffalo. No, and she knows that, but she also, and again, I'm going to go back to the youth of her bigs because on that last possession we just saw, again, end of shot clock, you got a one-on-one -on -one isolation down low. Yeah, that's where the ball's got to go. They're making the right reads. It's just finishing off that play, making the right shot. Lisa Ups with the pass down low, forces a jump ball with Brittany Morrison, and it will stay with Buffalo, number 11, Tessian Ruka in the game for the Bulls as well. As Felicia Leggett-Jack trying to get some of the younger players, the players that don't play as much in. That was a good job by Sierra Thompson to force that jump ball. Here's Lisa Ups with the three, no good. And it will rebound over to Bowling Green. Two minutes to go, 2.03 to go in the third quarter as the Bulls have pulled away. They have outscored BG 16-4 to in quarter number three. Williams into the corner for Puck. Nearly stolen away by Anwuka, and it's Tessie Anwuka that draws the foul. Yeah, and again, Bowling Green with the right concept and right ideas against the pressure. Get the ball, don't let it stick, get it moving around aggressively, and Anwuka just a little too aggressive up top defensively, but wants to the steal and go the other way, and we know why, because that's what they do. Jumper no good by Jane Euchre. Autumn Jones, will she shoot the three? She will. Will she hit it? You bet. <laughs> 13 <laughs> points for Autumn Jones off the bench. And nothing like banging one in front of your bench and then a little extra dap from your head coach down the court. And that's a great place to play. Show that in recruiting videos. <laughs> and uh, there's a nice putback on the follow by Jane Euchre to finally end the scoreless streak. 
at six minutes. Morrison rolls to the left and rolls it in. It winds up being six minutes and 14 seconds without any points for the Falcons. And just six here in the quarter. And the foul will be called on Onwuka. That's two quick ones on the sophomore from Nigeria via Lake Forest Academy in Illinois. Nayoleka Shadade now checking in for Buffalo. And this isn't Felicia Legetjak emptying her bench in the third quarter because all of these players at times have played a significant role. Two years ago, Ayaleka Shadade in, in Cleveland was a huge part of a championship run. And so um, keeping them fresh and sharp and getting ready to go back to Cleveland. Offensive foul, a little bit out of control there on the BG side. Will draw the foul. And don't forget to stick around after the game ends. Senior Day celebration as the Bulls will honor Stephanie Reed, Cassie Owsler, Catherine and Lisa Upps, along with Mariah Suchan. It's going to be a special moment that you're going to want to stick around for following the end of this one. One of those seniors, Lisa Upps, can't get the shot to go, but Morrison does and won. Yeah, big rebound. Another one of those players that was a huge part of the run a couple years ago. And Brittany Morrison, her scout is, uh, she wants rebounds. She's a beast under the board. And don't let all five foot nine of her fool you. Extremely strong, gets position, and then powers up. And she completes the three point play, the junior from North Ridgeville, Ohio, Brittany Morrison. And you see it's a. 30-point Buffalo lead. The men's team won by 30 last night. I'm sure that may have been reminded to the women. <laughs> the men beat BG by 30 last night. Maybe the women could try to do it again. And we have come to the end of a very difficult third quarter for Bowling Green. But another big one for UB. Autumn Jones continues to fill it up. It's the Bulls with a big lead heading to the final 10 minutes. Just under 2,700 fans on hand here at Buffalo's Alumni Arena, and they're watching this score as well, too. Central Michigan leads Toledo. Boy, they came from eight points down at the half to now lead by five in the fourth quarter. If Central Michigan loses, and with a Buffalo win that looks likely here today, that would make the Bulls the number one seed in this week's Mid-American Conference Tournament. If Central hangs on, then the Chippewas will be number one and the Bulls will finish a game behind Central Michigan and be the number two seed in the tournament. Well, it was not a good third quarter for Bowling Green and it continues here. They shot just two of 16 in the quarter, outscored 24 to six, and that allowed Buffalo to take a 12 point halftime lead and turn it into a 30 point lead. Look at the three from Marissa Hamilton off the bench. Well, that's another player that hasn't gotten as much court time. She's a freshman, and you look who she's playing behind. But And it's funny, she's a solid body, lists at 5'11", looks closer to a six-footer, but is a great outside shooter. You see her catch and release. Haley Puck will put the three up, not even close. But it will stay with the Falcons. The poor shooting. It for Bowling Green is not indicative to the type of players they have. You know, they've got three players on this roster right now that are in the top 15 all time in career threes made at Bowling Green, which is, has an extremely high, rich tradition of basketball there. And so for three of those players, just not connecting, of course, they're playing the number one three-point defense in the conference in Buffalo. And that one knocked away and stolen away and showed Dade will draw the foul off the steal. The Falcons are locked into the number 11 seed in the MAC tournament. They will play on the road on Monday, opponent to be determined. There's the steal by Shadade. And you see the chemistry. Hannah Hall gets her hands on the ball enough to know it's a turnover and immediately takes off the other way. It's just, it's a sign of a team that's all on the same page. Hamilton again for three, no good. 
But the rebound chased down by uh, Anwuka. She can't hit the baseline jumper, but right there to put it up and in is Shodade. No matter who they bring in off the bench, they just keep hustling for the for the basketball and usually have ways to put it in the net. And another steal, this one by Hamilton, taking it away from Perry. And Hannah Hall drives in, kicks it, Courtney Wilkins for three, got it! Speaking of shooters, and how about that, Larissa Hamilton already knocked one down, freshman to junior Courtney Wilkins, here, your turn, okay. Another one of the Australian contingent is Courtney Wilkins. Hits her 12th three of the year, that's Kennedy Williams no good on the three. Ball goes out of bounds, no, it was saved. But save right to Buffalo, and Marissa Hamilton will bring it into the front court and dish it off to her point guard, Hannah Hall. Lots of young players on the court. Lots of players that don't see a lot of playing time for the Bulls. On a nice feed from Anwuka to Hamilton. Yeah, Jennifer Roos calling a timeout. Good call because right now everyone from Buffalo is just getting their turn. Everybody is chipping in. It's the Bulls by 40. The five seniors have checked into the game for the Bulls for a little last hurrah here in the fourth quarter with Buffalo up 66 to 26. And you see the Up Sisters in there, along with Reed, Ausler, and Suchan. And they're going to have their moment in the sun in about seven and a half minutes when the game ends and the senior day festivities begin. We will cover it for you live here on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. Bulls have scored ten points to none in the quarter for BG until Angela Perry ends that. Oh, that's a great sign for the Falcons. Nice catch, great finish. Suchan for three off the side of the rim, no good. Just a little bit off to the side there, but the ball glancing off the hands of BG's Rachel Myers. And no, looks like they changed that. Looks like it went off the of UB. Knocked away, stolen away by Lisa Up. She feeds Stephanie Reed. Reed into the lane, drives, shoots, rolls off. Battle for the rebound taken by Perry, nearly stolen away again by Lisa Ups. And blocked by Ausler. Picked up by Reed. On the move, on the run. Reed bounce pass. Suchan had it knocked away. And trying, like trying to make some senior highlights here, aren't they? It did, and I think Stephanie Reed had a smile on her face about three lengths down the court there. Finally get something going for her. Right now, there these a lot of games still going on right now, but at the moment, here's what the bracket looks like for the Mid-American Conference Women's Basketball Tournament that starts on Wednesday. We mentioned the Bulls right now, the number two seed, Central Michigan. Looks like they're going to win and claim the number one seed. You see Bowling Green at 11, may likely face Toledo. Some of this could change, but we do know for Buffalo fans, they're going to play as the number two seed at 5 o'clock on Wednesday at the Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland. Double team in the corner and a steal again by the Bulls. This time by Catherine Ups to her sister Lisa. Pull up jumper. No good. And we get a foul called on Cassie Ausler. Just her first. And Ausler's trying to get a little bit of clarification because she wants to sharpen up going into the postseason here. Baseline. 
Bulls have won their MAC games this season by an average margin of victory of 15 and a half points. This one is going to push that even a little bit higher. They have been a dominant team, especially here at home. Shot clock at four. Oh, and that's a clear offensive foul as Kennedy Williams put her forearm into the gut of Stephanie Reed. Well, Stephanie Reed uses her quick feet to really fluster offensive players and that's a senior against a freshman and that is that's Stephanie Reed we've seen it over the years Paul she just gets into your head and that's what you want to do because you just want to create some some space for yourself I would assume a couple more moments here for the seniors and then they will likely get one heck of a standing ovation as they check out ups with the miss crashing into the Buffalo bench on the hustle is Sierra Thompson and here's the moment right here as the Bulls will call timeout five subs in and five seniors out what a moment here at UB's alumni arena hugs for the five seniors who will check out at home for the final time in their career and the crowd is on their feet for a reason. <laughs> Well-deserved standing ovation. Look at the emotions from Felicia Leggett-Jack and the five members of the senior class. What a way to cap off their year with one of the most amazing basketball seasons in Mid-American Conference history. Look at Felicia. She can't fight back the tears, and I don't blame you for a second. Yeah, it's certainly been a tough week, I'd say, for her in, in that sense, kind of knowing this moment was going to come. And remember, following the game, Senior Day celebration, as each of those five will be honored individually here as the Bulls will say goodbye, but not farewell yet, because there's more basketball games to be played. But what a, what a legacy that that group will leave in helping to turn around a program and move it in the directions that it likely is going to stay moving in. So five new players into the game for the Bulls as we play out the final five minutes here. And I don't want to use the word pressure, but I'm going to say pressure. Imagine the five Bulls that had to check in in this moment, and you better come out, and you better play hard, and you better, you know, kind of uh, respect the senior class that just checked out. Anna Hall with her first two of the game for the freshman from Hamilton, Ontario. Bowling Green has scored just eight points in the second half. Amazing. The Bulls have outscored Bowling Green 37-8. to eight in the second half. Well, I'm sure that was part of the conversation at halftime in the locker room with Felicia Get jack understanding that we're not going to score all the time as Brittany Morrison just hustles after the glass. But this Buffalo program, they've really predicated themselves on their defense, and so they came out and locked down. Just amazing the fact that Bowling Green has yet to break 30 points in the game. And another miss, but a putback that won't go for Perry and a rebound for Morrison. Courtney Wilkins can't get the layup to go. Corner three is no good by Madison Parker, but the follow-up is good for Bowling Green, and they finally hit that 30-point mark. And you look at the last couple offensive possessions for Bowling Green and they're doing the right things. They're, they're just not putting the shot down. You get another look there yeah. at the men's bracket. That's what the men's bracket looks like. We know the Bulls are locked in at the number one seed. They will play at noon on Thursday and they will play the winner of the Central Michigan Bowling Green game. So a chance for the Bulls to play Bowling Green twice within a week because last night the Bulls beat Bowling Green the men's version 100 to 70 so uh, you know again Buffalo the clear and obvious favorite uh, to advance to the MAC championship game and there'll be some teams that will have their say along the way but the way the Bulls have been playing um, I, I'd, I'd be very shocked if they're not in that final on Saturday. Paul it's March. <laughs> but I know it's March, but you also know that 
We've seen both of these Buffalo teams play in December, January, and February I to know. know how good they are. I just have a hard time saying that in March, but look at that. Speaking of which, um, Toledo at Savage Hanging Arena, five-point game at home. Uh, I'm not counting that one out yet either. Remember, if Toledo beats Central Michigan, the Bulls will be the number one seed on the women's side as well. And it, it's now down to a three-point game, just getting word from the truck. That's just That may alter your plans on getting to Cleveland for Wednesday's game. It might, instead of 5 o'clock, it could be at noon. And again, another turnover and another steal for the Bulls. Even these players that don't see that much action continuing the defensive intensity, except they turn it over on the other end as well, too. Bowling Green has turned the ball all over 24 times. It's the 19th time this year that Buffalo has forced 20 turnovers in a game. It's exhausting against Buffalo, Paul, because it's just they they recycle, it seems like, players off the bench, and, and they all play with the same type of defensive intensity. And so obviously they've got more talent and experience in some positions, but you can always bet that you're not going to earn anything easy against the Bulls. Jump ball again, from, thanks to pressure from Brittany Morrison, will send it the other way once again. The Bulls have held Bowling Green to just 10 points in the second half and 30 points in the game. Lisa ups off glass and in. And another rebound ripped down by Brittany Morrison, her seventh of the game. And Lisa ups with the travel. <laughs> and, and now Lisa's getting the sub out. They had her in there so she could get the bucket on her senior night. Nice cross, spin, hang a little bit. Nice kiss off the glass, and that's a nice way to say bye to your home hoops. Yep, nice round of applause for Lisa Ups. Did not play a whole lot this year, but has been a key player through four years here uh, and an inspiration to her teammates all through those four years. How about this? Lisa and Kat Ups, biomedical science majors, have both applied to med school already. They want to be doctors. And it's very realistic when you look at the GPAs they carry and... It's just a fantastic storyline. Well, if you take a trip to Australia and you get sick, you're going to be in good shape if you can find one of the ups doctors to take care of you. Pull-up jumper in the lane is no good for Maddie Cole of Bowling Green. Marissa Hamilton up and under move has it blocked. Nice block by Battle. And we just got word Central did win 72-67. So Buffalo will lock up the second seed. So they will be the Bulls, the number two seed at the MAC Women's Tournament, which starts on Wednesday. The first game for Buffalo will be at 5 o'clock on Wednesday against the winner of the 7-10 matchup, which will occur on Monday night. Uh, and those teams to be determined as the rest of the schedule shakes out, we'll know that by the time we get to the post-game show. So there's your details. Tickets available at ubbulls.com. Opponent to be determined, but 5 o'clock on Wednesday at the Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland. Just enough time for Buffalo to get some extra ice, and not too long. It's tough when you get almost more than four or five days off. Yeah, there's always that fear that sometimes the teams that play Monday have a little momentum going as a matter, you know, uh, as a, but ultimately the chance to rest and be ready to go is is what every coach wants to be able to have. And it's a conference flip, a Saturday to Wednesday. That's, that's not anything but the norm. Traveling called on Hamilton. Yeah. 
So the Bulls fans that are here, almost 3,000 of them, cheering on their team. Boy, it has been a fun year here in Alumni Arena, no matter what you were here for. And the Bulls are going to finish the first ever undefeated season in school history here at home with their 12th win of the home schedule. This will be their 17th win out of 25 by more than 10 points. I don't know how you can be much more dominant than that. Well, and Felicia Leggett Jack has often talked about protecting your house, protecting your court, and, and it's directly translated onto the court with her team and the way they play because, like you said, Paul, there's just a little something extra special about this program when they're in Alumni Arena. And beyond that, both the men's and the women's teams have captured the sports fans of Western New York, and the crowds have been great here for both the men's and the women's teams. This has uh, been a, an unprecedented, successful season for college basketball in Western New York, with all of the teams having uh, uh, great seasons and really a chance for four local teams to go to the NCAA tournament. That's never happened before. Uh, so college basketball is on the map here in Buffalo, and... It has been a fun year to enjoy a great sport. Final seconds of this one. That one will bounce in for Bowling Green. But it's going to be a big Buffalo victory that sends the Bulls to their 25th win of the season. 16-2 and two in the MAC, thanks to a 74-38 win over Bowling Green. The Bulls are the MAC East champions, the number two seed in the MAC tournament. Don't go away. Senior Day festivities from here at Alumni Arena are coming up following this big Bulls 74-38 win. It's a 74-38 Buffalo win over Bowling Green. The Bulls' ninth win in a row and completes their first ever undefeated season at home. I'm Paul Peck with Amy Otterberg. Thank you for joining us for our post-game show. We'll get started with the Senior Day festivities in just a moment. But another example today, Amy, of how dominant this team has been all season long, their ability to control games with their defense, shooting, three-point shooting, hustle, steals, forcing turnovers. That's what we've seen all year long. We saw it again today. Yeah, and this is a one that they'll remember forever because they did it together. Again, it wasn't one player that completely let everything. Everyone had their opportunities, and whether it was an assist, a big shot, just big moments again all the way around the court. And that's what um, this program has been about, especially more than ever this year in particular. Yeah, the Bulls hold Bowling Green to just 24% shooting. They had uh, two quarters where they didn't even score 10 points, Bowling Green. Uh, and again, just a dominant defensive effort spread across and scoring. Autumn Jones, the leading scorer off the bench, really provided some instant offense. But this was a game about the seniors, the group of five seniors that are about to be honored here. Stephanie Reed, Cassie Ausler, Mariah Suchan, and the Up Sisters. Not only what they did in this game, but what they've done for this program all season and for the last four years. Yeah, they're going to have the next, probably I'd say, this celebration and then and they'll take the night to, to really embrace this thing. Then guess what? All eyes on Cleveland. Let's join public address announcer Brad Ryder. It is senior day festivities here at Buffalo's Alumni Arena. Accumulated 85 wins in the blue and white. These five student athletes have also left behind a legacy that includes multiple program records and a MAC tournament championship banner and NCAA tournament appearance. Our first senior is number three, Lisa Upps. The Wollongong Australia native has been a consistent contributor to the Bulls over her successful four-year career. Ups appeared in her 91st game as a Bull today and has earned 19 starts for head coach Felicia Leggett jack She enjoyed the best season of her career as a sophomore as she appeared in 25 games and made 16 starts while helping lead the Bulls to their first ever MAC tournament championship and NCAA tournament appearance. Inside the classroom, Ups has been recognized for her academic prowess as she has earned all academic all-MAC honors in each of the past two seasons at Buffalo. A biomedical sciences major, Ups is escorted this afternoon by her favorite coach, Cherie Cordoba, Alexa Bartosiewicz, Laura Dougal, and Sarah Snyder. Take this. Hey, everyone. <laughs> 
Um, I just want to thank you all for an amazing four years. Um, when I first got here, there was about 10 people in the crowd. And now look what we got here. So thank you for everything. I've been far away from my family and you guys made up for it. So thank you all. Go Bulls. Our next senior is number 21, Mariah Suchin. The Wichita, Kansas native is a four-year member of the Bulls and has appeared in 103 games while starting 33 over her impactful career. The gritty defender enjoyed her best season as a Bull last year as she appeared in all 32 games and made 22 starts while averaging 18 and a half minutes per game, 4.3 points, and 4.6 rebounds. Suchen was also a key bench contributor for the Bulls when they secured their first ever NCAA tournament appearance, appearance after claiming the MAC tournament championship. In the classroom, Suchin has been awarded for her dedication and hard work as she has earned academic all-MAC honors in each of the past two seasons. A biomedical sciences major, Suchin is being accompanied on the floor today by her father, John Suchin, mother, Kellen Suchin, her brother, Alec, and her stepmother, Lara Stiltner. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I just want to thank you all for being the best fans and making these four years incredible. And it's just been an amazing journey. So thank you, everyone. Our third senior this afternoon is number five, Catherine Upps. The Wollongong Australian native has been a mainstay in the Bulls starting lineup over the past three seasons and she has appeared in 112 games and earned the start in 82. The do-it-all guard was relied on heavily during the Bulls MAC championship run as she started 32 of 34 games and played 24.4 minutes per game. The team leader is having a career year for the Bulls this season as she has started all 28 games she's appeared in while averaging a career high 7.6 points, 4.3 rebounds and 1.8 assists across 24 minutes per game. Inside the classroom, Ups continues to thrive as she has earned academic All-MAC honors in each of the past two seasons, while also earning first-team COSIDA academic All-Region honors, marking the first time a UB women's basketball student athlete earned that recognition since 2000. A biomedical sciences major, Ups is being joined on the court today by her favorite coach, Cherie Cordoba, and Alexa Bartosovich. Bulls fans, I just want to say thank you for everything over the past four years. Thank you so much for helping our team grow Buffalo into what it is today. We really couldn't have done it without all of you. So thank you. Thank you for everything. Go Bulls. Our next senior is a local fan favorite, number 31, Cassie Ausler. After transferring to Buffalo from Robert Morris, Ausler has been a dominant post player for the Bulls over the last three seasons. The Grand Island native has appeared in 84 games and earned the start in 79 during her impressive Buffalo career, while also going over the 1,000-point plateau between UB and Robert Morris. Ausler has etched her name across the UB record books as she sits in fifth place in career blocks with 136 and sixth in career field goal percentage, making 48.8% of her attempts. She's enjoying the best season of her career this year, averaging 13.8 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 1.9 blocks while starting all 29 games for UB. The grad student will be joined on the court this afternoon by her father, Chris Ausler, her brother Josh, and her sisters, Miranda and Layla. so much for being such great fans this year. Um, the school's on the rise, so keep attending these games. I'll know I'll be at every single one I can be at. Um, this is a great city, and I'm really lucky to call it my hometown. Thank you for everything. Our final 
Sr. will go down as the best point guard to ever wear the blue and white. Number one, Stephanie Reed. The heart and soul of the Bulls over the past three and a half seasons, Reed has appeared in 110 career games and started 108 over her illustrious career. Earlier this season, Reed became the Bulls' all-time leader in assists and currently sits at 641, ranking ninth in MAC history. The dynamic playmaker also became the Bulls' 24th member of the 1,000-point club earlier this season as she's one of three active players in the NCAA who have scored at least 100 or 1,100 career points, 600 assists, 300 rebounds, and 200 career steals. The gritty defender will always be remembered for her game-winning shot at the buzzer to secure the Bulls' first MAC tournament championship and NCAA tournament appearance. Our communication major, Reed, will be joined on the court this afternoon by Rachel Kamrowski and Judy and Bob Galgansky. <laughs> Hi Bulls fans, how are we doing today? <laughs> I would really just like to say a huge thank you for everything. I know you guys have been a huge part of my life over the last four years, well three and a half, but um, honestly I could not imagine any other place that I would like to call my second home. I mean you guys are like family to me. I've developed so many relationships here and it's going to be really hard for me to leave. Um, to all the players that I've played with and all the coaches that I've had, you guys have shaped me into the person that I am today, and I'm really appreciative of it. So, I love you. I'm forever a bull. Go Bulls! Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together one more time for the 2018 UB Women's Basketball Seniors. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the video board for a special... And what a cool moment, and what a cool ceremony here, and, you know, just the love that the players were feeling from the fans and the other way as well, too. Yeah, and now they're getting some videos.
16-2 in the Mid-American Conference, Amy, with a nine-game winning streak. What more could you want from your team heading into postseason as the number two seed to be playing as well as the Bulls are now? You're right, and you look at the margin of victory today, which is always great, but it's, it's 42 points in the paint, 22 to two points in fast break, 28 points off turnovers, 15 steals. This is the way that Buffalo, this is why they've gotten the attention they have, and this is who they are. And so to, kind of, to have that momentum rolling into Cleveland, and that's big time. 25 turnovers forced, and that's always a key for Buffalo in the way they play defense. And as I look at the stats, I see they stole the ball 15 times from Bowling Green today. Now we're going to steal a little bit of threads of the net because the Bulls are going to celebrate their Mid-American Conference East Division Championship by cutting down the net. Not the first time Stephanie Reed has done it, but it'll feel just as good for her as she holds that piece up and gets a nice round of applause here. What a great way to finish off Senior Day festivities here. A big win, a wonderful Senior Day celebration, and now the real celebration starts with everybody. Now Cassie Ausler's turn to head up and cut down a piece of the net. Boy, between the men doing it on Tuesday night and the women doing it today, the net budget here at UB will have to be increased a little bit for next year. I don't think it's too hard to get the approval for that one, Paul. I do not think it's hard <laughs> at all. And rightfully so, 25 wins this year, program record, and it just seems like they've set records, but now they're making them a little bit harder for everybody to get. 12-0 and at home this year, and... 16 MAC wins. It just it continues to grow and grow, and it's a, it's a sign again of maturity and experience, and that these young women are not looking back on what they've done, but are continuing to kind of march towards what they can do. Mariah Suchan, one of those seniors, uh, cutting down her piece of the net. You see the shirts that say Beasts of the East. The Bulls will play Wednesday in Cleveland at 5 o'clock in their first playoff game against the winner of the Toledo-Kent State game that will be played on Monday. We are proud and happy to bring in Stephanie Reed to join us here at Press Row. Have you collected your emotions and your thoughts from the last 10 minutes? I don't think I'm going to at this point. <laughs> Honestly, we don't play um, yet. It's just so many emotions. I mean, to be... To get this final win to play with the seniors for three minutes, like that was so much fun. That was the best time I've had, honestly. And to be Mac East champs, it's pretty exciting. So, you know, it's exciting to see what we got next. I, I know your folks are going to come in for your graduation, so they weren't able to get here for your senior day, but were you surprised to see the video uh, there from your yeah. family? <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. It made me cry. That's what made me emotional. Oh, you can't pull the family card, but, you know, that was, yeah, that was really something that warms my heart. <laughs> the senior class you guys now are 42 and 13 at alumni arena which is incredible we just did the math and figured that all out but um, obviously you look at all the numbers and everything that you've done personally and the stats don't lie but what do you want to leave on the home court for this crowd to remember Stephanie Reed by I just want fans to remember me as someone that's given it their all and I hope that they know I've left every part of me out on this court um, every hustle play and you know I want to be a player that excites people I want to be remembered as someone with heart and you know, hopefully I've done that. I think you have. I think that's Thank safe you. to say. You know, I know, I it. Stephanie, you live in the here and now. You live game by game. You've got more games and more goals to play. But have you thought at all about what you and Cassie and Mariah and Catherine and Lisa have left as a legacy to this program through your four years? Yeah, I mean, we came in really wanting to make a difference. And I think that that's something we locked into. And I think we've accomplished that. I think we've really grown this program with the help of everyone else in you know, it's really exciting to leave behind something that, you know, to be a part of history. I mean, we've had a MAC championship and, you know, we're going to win another one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Everybody in the arena heard that and everybody on TV did too, but I know that you don't back away from that and you truly believe that, don't you? I do. I truly believe it. I know with this group that we're going to win the MAC championship. What, what convinces you of that? Is it a way, the way obviously you played today? I mean, is it the confidence? Is it the experience? What is it that leads you to believe that you're going to be able to do that? I mean, we're a hardworking group and we're a group that will never say never. I mean, we've been down at half and come back and beat teams by 20. I mean, we're a team that through, we have each other's back and chemistry is something that you can't coach and that's something that we have and, you know, we... We lock in for 40 minutes, and whether we have our bad times or our good, we're always there, and we're going to push to the end. 
Stephanie, thank you very much. Not just for this interview, not just for this game, but for four years of watching you lead this team to heights that it has never been to before. And we can't wait to see what the next step is going to be in Cleveland. Thank you so much. I All appreciate right. it. Stephanie Reed, Bulls senior, uh, joining us here as the rest of her teammates and some of the other folks with the program get to cut the nets down. And of course, the Bulls are hoping this won't be the first time within a week that they'll do that because there's a chance it could happen again next Next Saturday, this time at the Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, the Bulls will begin play as the number two seed in the MAC tournament. That will be Wednesday at 5 o'clock against the winner of Monday's number seven versus number 10 game. Felicia Leggett Jack is the head coach. Uh, have you collected all your emotions after what's been a very emotional day? And when Mrs. Kasevich wants to give you a kiss, we'll wait for it. Trust me. <laughs> give the honor to God who's ahead of my life, you know. You gotta just do what your heart tells you to do and you can never lose your passion even if others tell you that you're, you're not good at it. I came here as a broken coach and I, I inherited five kids that believed in me when nobody else did and they stuck by me and they believed that we can continue to fight together and if we fight together we might have a chance. And then to see this team go and, and cut nets down here at, at, at Buffalo and, and ultimately gonna cut some nets down later on in Cleveland and get out there and be able to dance, I just tell you, you just can't quit on yourself. This is the lesson to all the girls out there. Don't let anybody tell you that four-letter word can't because I was told that word and I didn't believe them and these five kids didn't believe it either. And look at us now. Today is a day for all of us. We celebrate. And Coach, you've had many senior classes that you've got to send off over the years, but this one, I mean, you look at what they want to do. They want to be doctors and they want to be nannies and work with kids and change the world. Um, you don't always inherit that. You, it, we, we tend to talk a lot about the basketball, but this class has way more than that. Um, when you recruited them four years ago, I mean, did you ever envision this type of what you're putting out into the world? You know, I've been at some, some amazing universities like Syracuse, Indiana, Michigan State, Boston College, Hofstra. And my thing is, at this job, I said, I am not going to waver from our cab. I'm not going to waver from standing for character first, academic second, and then basketball. Uh, these young ladies have proven they're ambassadors to this sport. They're ambassadors to young women. And academically, the overall team GPA is a 3.2 has been for the last five years. This young group here, this, they stand for something bigger than themselves, and now they play basketball at a high clip and cut nets down. It's important that you don't lose what's going to sustain you for the rest of your lives. Academics is what's going to be what it, it, it sustains you. And for those guys to do what they've done in the classroom, I got two doctors. I got a doctor named Mackenzie Lozen that came through these doors as well. We got Joanna Smith who's over in Turkey playing professional basketball. Buffalo has turned out some amazing student athletes that play for this women's basketball team. And God chose me to be a part of this thing. I am humble and I'm enthusiastic about the purpose. Congratulations on a great ceremony. Congratulations on a win. Congratulations on this season. We will see you in Cleveland on Wednesday. Keep supporting this women's basketball team. I tell you what, I, I see all of you. I feel all your energy. We are not done. This 25 and 4 is going on the road, and we're going to take you with us. Our goal is to cut the ultimate net down. If, if Connecticut win, can win a national championship, why can't we? <laughs> Talk about a mic drop by Felicia Leggett. Jack, how about that one? So a wonderful day here at UB, a big win for the Bulls, a wonderful send-off to a great senior class, and now we know what the next step is going to be. It starts on Wednesday in Cleveland. The Bulls will play at 5 o'clock in the quarterfinals of the MAC tournament. It's going to be fun, isn't it? Yeah, I just want to see your shoes, your dancing shoes. Uh, I well, I, you know, you don't want to see me dance, but if uh, if that's what it, it'll take, I'll be more than happy to do it. We thank you for joining us all season long here on ESPN3. Um, this has been a wonderful ride that is not over yet for the Bulls. We'll see you in Cleveland on Wednesday. This has been a production of the Mid-American Conference and ESPN.